In this lecture, we will find out input and output impedances of common ammeter fixed bias configuration. This is the BJT amplifier circuit and you can see fixed bias configuration inside the rectangle. In case of DC analysis, we only have to consider the circuit inside the rectangle because capacitor C1 and C2 will remain open circuited for DC and we generally use DC analysis to find out operating point we find out operating point in DC analysis and we also find out input and output DC currents and voltages but here we have to perform the AC analysis Vs is the input voltage with resistance Rs Vo is the output voltage and it is the voltage across the load resistance Rl in order to find out input and output impedances we need to do two things the first thing is to find out AC equivalent circuit and the second thing is to replace the transistor this transistor symbol with its equivalent model and we are discussing RE model so we will replace the transistor we will replace the transistor with the RE model and as we are having the common ammeter configuration we will have the common ammeter RE model which we have discussed in the last two lectures so let's move to the first step in which we will find out AC equivalent circuit. In order to find out AC equivalent circuit, all the DC sources must be short circuited. We have VCC as the DC source. So we will short circuit VCC. And after this, we will have potential at this point equal to zero and potential at this point equal to zero. So we have ground at this point terminal and ground at this terminal potential of ground is equal to zero volts this is the step number one in finding out AC equivalent circuit in step number two we need to short circuit all the capacitors in this circuit there are only two capacitors C1 and C2 C1 and C2 are called as coupling capacitors C3 is not present in this circuit because C3 is used to short circuit the ammeter resistance RE but in fixed bias configuration there is no ammeter resistance so we do not require the bypass capacitor C3 so we will short circuit capacitor C1 and C2 in step number 2 and once you rearrange this circuit you will have AC equivalent circuit of BJT amplifier we have obtained this circuit after completion of step number 1 we have obtained this circuit after completion of step number one potential at this point is zero volts potential at this point is also equal to zero volts and you can see this branch is having potential equal to zero volts because it is connected to the ground so we have just made two changes in this circuit we have connected this terminal to this branch you can see here the connection between this terminal and this branch and we have also connected this terminal to this branch here you can see the connection so this is all you need to do to obtain the AC equivalent circuit now we will move to the second step in which we will replace the transistor with the RE model we are having common ammeter configuration so the RE model we will draw is for common ammeter transistor this is the final circuit after replacing the transistor with its RE equivalent model. The circuit inside the box is RE equivalent model of the transistor and we have obtained this circuit after completion of step number one and step number two. Now we will move to the calculation of input and output impedances. Let's say this terminal is terminal one and this terminal is terminal one prime this terminal here is terminal 2 and this terminal here is terminal 2 prime in order to calculate different circuit parameters we will neglect the source and we will also neglect the load let's say the input current is I subscript I and the input voltage is V subscript I the input voltage is potential difference between the terminals 1 and 1 prime the output current is I subscript O and the output voltage is the voltage between terminals 2 and 2 prime current through resistance beta plus 1 RE 
is the base current and current in this branch is the collector current now we will calculate the input impedance the input impedance is the impedance seen from terminals 1 and 1 prime the input impedance is represented by z subscript i z subscript i and it is equal to it is equal to input voltage vi by the input current ii this is input impedance and we can easily calculate the input impedance by looking to the input side input impedance is equal to resistance rb connected in parallel with the resistance beta plus 1 re so z i is equal to resistance rb connected in parallel with beta plus 1 resistance re or we can say that we can say that z i is equal to rb beta plus 1 re divided by rb plus beta plus 1 re this is the final expression of the input impedance we can also calculate the input impedance by calculating the base current ib z i is equal to v i divided by i i v i is the drop across resistance r b or drop across resistance beta plus 1 r e we will consider beta plus 1 r e and the drop is equal to beta plus 1 r e multiplied with the current flowing through the resistance which is equal to the base current divided by the input current i i now we will use the current divider rule to find out base current i b by using the current divider rule the base current i b is equal to input current i i multiplied with resistance r b and we already had input current i i in the denominator inside the bracket resistance r b plus beta plus 1 resistance r e this expression is the expression of base current i b and you can see in numerator and in denominator we have the input current so it will be cancelled out and z i is equal to beta plus 1 r e multiplied with resistance r b in denominator we have resistance r b plus beta plus 1 r e which is similar to this result so input impedance is equal to resistance r b connected in parallel with beta plus 1 r e so this is all for input impedance now we will move to the output impedance the output impedance is the impedance seen from terminals 2 and 2 prime and the output impedance is represented by z subscript o z subscript o is equal to the output voltage by the output current and to calculate z subscript o we need to short circuit the source and we need to open circuit the load this means this means voltage source vs is equal to 0 volts and the load resistance rl is equal to infinite ohms when vs is equal to 0 the input voltage vi is also equal to 0 this implies the input voltage vi is equal to 0 volts when input voltage is equal to 0 volts this means base current IB is equal to 0 amps the base current is equal to 0 amps and when base current is equal to 0 amps from here you can see the collector current is also equal to 0 amps this implies the collector current IC is also equal to 0 amps and when collector current is equal to 0 amps this terminal will be open circuited and we already have RL open circuited so we have the output circuit in which current dependent source is open circuited and the load resistance RL is also open circuited two resistances RO and RC are connected in parallel so we have resistance RO which is the output resistance of RE model connected in parallel with the resistance RC 
and we can easily calculate the output impedance ZO. ZO is equal to RO connected in parallel with resistance RC or we can say ZO is equal to RO multiplied with RC divided by RO plus RC. So this is the final expression of the output impedance. Now we will perform few simplifications. We will first simplify the expression of input impedance. Beta is a large quantity. So beta plus 1 is nearly equal to beta and the resistance beta plus 1 Re is nearly equal to beta times Re. And if resistance Rb is greater than or equal to 10 times beta plus 1 Re, we can neglect beta plus 1 Re from the denominator and the input impedance is equal to Rb multiplied with beta plus 1 Re divided by resistance Rb. Rb, Rb will cancel out and Zi is now equal to beta plus 1 Re. And this is when the resistance Rb is greater than or equal to 10 times beta plus 1 Re. Now we will simplify the expression of output impedance. RO is the output resistance of the RE model and we already know RO is a large resistance. In case of common ammeter configuration it is in orders of mega ohms and in case of common base configuration it is infinity. So RO is larger than RC and to be more precise if RO is greater than or equal to 10 times resistance RC, we can neglect RC. So the output impedance is equal to RO multiplied with RC divided by RO because we have neglected RC from the denominator. RO, RO will cancel out and ZO is equal to RC. And this is true when RO is greater than or equal to 10 times RC. So this is all for this lecture. In the next lecture we will find out expressions for current gain and voltage gain and if you have any doubt in this lecture you may ask in the comment section.